Welcome to Foundational You with Dr. Dean Hackett, the home of biblical teaching and cultural impact. We are so glad that you joined us for today's podcast. You can find out more about Dr. Dean, read his blog, and find more episodes at fdeanhackett.com. Now for today's episode. When is it just and right to end the human life? Is it ever just and right to choose to end your own life because you believe you do not have quality of life? These are incredibly important and challenging questions that the Holy Scripture is not silent about, that God Himself is not silent about. We're going to be looking at those today in our podcast on Foundational You. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Dean. And these questions are not uh, uh, fuzzy or questionable when we go to Holy Scripture. We find that Holy Scripture is very, very vocal and very exact in what it says about the quality of human life and when it is just and right to end a human life. We're going to begin looking at that today. Go with me, if you would, please, to the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. We're going to look at chapter 9. We're going to be looking at uh, the life of a family that was right after the flood and was God's chosen family to start again human life on planet Earth. Genesis chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Let's stop for a moment. Those words sound very familiar, and they should be, because these are almost exactly the same words that God said about Adam and Eve. When God, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, when God said, let us make man in our own image, and then it says, God made them in his own image, male and female created he them, goes right on in verse 28 and says, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and take dominion. God had not changed his mind even though he has had to flood the earth, even though the God said that of, of mankind, every thought of their imagination was only evil continually, God found this righteous family who had not corrupted their DNA, and he then said, I have chosen you. We're going to restart the human race with you, and God has not changed their purpose, their destiny. God has not changed the value and worth of their life. God blesses them and says to them to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. We're to fill the earth with human population. There's not population controlled by God's design. That is a humanistic man-created design. God says, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Then he goes on to say, every beast of the earth, every bird of the sky, and all that moves on the earth, and all the fish of the sea will fear you and be terrified of you. They are given in to your hand. Look at what God says. God does not say that the human race is a higher form of the animal kingdom. Swamp gas in some goo somewhere didn't suddenly form human life, and out of that came human life, and, and uh, it came animal life, and then out of animal life came human beings. We are not a higher form of the ape kingdom. No, we are created special by Almighty God, as we discovered in Psalm 139. God had it all written in a book. He had your life, and He had your 
body, shape, and form written in a book. It's written in a book. He has a blueprint for you because he has a purpose and destiny for you. And it's for every human being. Mankind is not a higher form of the animal kingdom. Mankind is a special, unique design, a special kingdom created in the image of God. We're a trinity, body, soul, and spirit, or as the scripture lists it, spirit, soul, and body. We are created in the image of God that we have a creative mind like no other life form has a creative mind like mankind has because we're made in the image of Almighty God. And so God says, I have created mankind and they're going to be stewards over all of my creation. Remember, we looked last time at Psalm 8 verses 4 to 8 where it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou didst make him a little lower than the angels. Thou didst place him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast given him dominion over the works of thy hands. Mankind was created to be stewards over all of God's creation. And here he says, All other life forms are going to fear you because you are the one that is their steward. You are the one that's been given authority over all of them. Indeed, indeed, mankind is very special. Our quality of life is very special. And that quality of life is not determined by our physical abilities, our physical strengths, our mental abilities, our mental strengths. That quality of life and value of life is given to us because we're created in the image of God. We, he formed us by his own hand in our mother's womb, and he had a blueprint for our life and a purpose and destiny for our life. And for some of us, we, we, we are born with physical weaknesses, with physical flaws. But listen, dear ones, God didn't put anything in that was not necessary, and God didn't leave anything out that is not necessary for the purpose and destiny He had for your life. I always wanted to be six foot two. Well, I missed it by a long ways. Because I had, I had a goal and purpose that I wanted for my life. But you know what? For the purpose and destiny that God had for my life, 54 years of Christian ministry, I didn't need to be six foot two. I didn't need to have a full head of hair. The purpose and destiny he had for my life, he didn't leave anything out that was not necessary for me to be able to fulfill his purpose and his destiny. Everything I needed for God's calling and purpose for my life he gave to me, and it's the same for you. Maybe you were born with a physical disease, cystic fibrosis, or maybe you had Downs. Maybe you were missing a limb. Almighty God knows. He has it created. He didn't leave anything out that's not necessary for you to fulfill His purpose and destiny for your life. And you have quality of life because you have great purpose and destiny of life and because you're made in His image. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. And you know, study the scripture, Genesis to Revelation. Nowhere is there given a universal ideal of the human body. All of that is a man-made concept. Okay, and you'll look at mankind and you'll notice that some, yeah, they have kind of an hourglass shape, but not, not everyone. In fact, not most. Some are shaped like a pear. Some are shaped like an apple. Some are shaped like a stick. <laughs> some, they have big bones and they're, and they're, they're, 
they, they carry maybe a fair amount of weight. See, the whole idea that, that as like for myself, when you're five foot eight, you're this amount of weight and that's the ideal. Well, I've never been able to keep that ideal. In fact, back when, uh, before I had an auto accident in 1992 that, that ended my 10K running, back when I was running 10Ks, I had very, very little body fat. And I was still almost 30 pounds heavier than what the medical field says is my ideal. And the reason is because my bone structure and my muscle structure, there's no way I can meet that ideal. See, there is no ideal of the human body in Scripture. That is why those that we call physically deformed and, and, and disabled, okay, only, only by man's ideal, not by God's ideal and God's design. God says they have great quality of life because I formed them and shaped them in their mother's womb according to my blueprint and according to my purpose and my destiny for their life. And dear ones, whenever you get your life lined up with Almighty God and His purpose and destiny for you, then you realize, oh, I do have great quality of life and purpose and destiny. So he goes on here in Genesis chapter 9. In the very next verse, after he says, they are given into your hand, he says, every moving thing that lives will be food for you. I give you everything just as I gave you the green plant. You see, the animal kingdom is given to us for food as well as the plant life. Yes, we're supposed to eat corn and green beans and carrots and, and uh, all the other foodstuffs. Yeah, we're supposed to eat oats and grains and, and fruits, apples, oranges. Yeah, we're supposed to eat all of the food. But he also said, I have given you everything in the animal kingdom. The fish, go fish, eat fish, eat some trout, eat some bass, eat some, uh, some cod, eat some salmon. They're given to you for food. Eat Go hunt deer and elk and bear. I've given them to you for food. Eat, eat a black Angus. Eat a registered Hereford. I've given them to you for food. God gave us sheep and cattle for food. It's okay to eat food. God says it's okay. He himself says, I've given it to you. See, God designed that. That's not a man-made idea. We're not going to be better off because we stop eating meat and only eat vegetables. Almighty God created us to eat food. This is God's design. God's design. But then listen, because he gives us something very special next in this passage of Scripture. Listen to what he says next. Very careful because it explains to you the incredible the incredible value and worth God places on you and all human beings. Only you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is its blood. Cook the food, cook it well, okay? Cook the meat well. But for your own lifeblood, I will surely require a reckoning. For every animal will I require it. Of man, too, will I require a reckoning for human life of every man for that of his fellow man. Listen to what God says. God says, but listen, you don't go hunting for mankind. You don't, you don't take the life of another human being the way you take life of the animal kingdom, the way you take life of the plant kingdom. I've given to you those forms of life for food, but mankind is special. And I, re I have a greater requirement. I have a greater standard for human life than I have for animal life and I have for plant life. That's why when we are, when we are putting the darter snail and the owl and the whale and the, and the eagle and, and we're putting them above human life, that is outside of God's order and design. 
We human beings are the ones that have special value and quality of life. Because why? He goes on to tell us the very next verse. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, for God made man in his own image. Mankind, human beings, are a higher form of life because we're made in God's image. And so he holds that standard. You have great value and great worth because you're created in God's image. Thank you for joining me in this podcast. We're going to pick this up next time and continue talking about quality of life, the value of human life. We'll talk about when does life begin in the womb. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you will share and I hope that you will subscribe. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. This Christ-centered biblical training is a ministry of Spirit Life Ministries. We hope that you are blessed by this podcast and share it with your friends and colleagues. For more information or questions for Dr. Dean, please contact us at the website fdeanhackett.com.